Can you put the Hoover away, please? That's what I'm starting a cooking video. <laughs> <laughs> Random fact. Oh, I've got a bit of wet on there. I washed my hair with cheap shampoo. Watch the Al Dante video. You'll know what I mean now. This is Barry uh, and I are both wearing the cartoon tops. Yeah. I can't start this video without Homer. I, I, I feel lost without him, okay? This is going to be a tough one. Sorry about this, a bit unprepared. Another random fact, I never knew that this bit had to come down, hence why the Queen is like, Ugh. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to My Virgin Kitchen, it's Barry here, I hope you are well. Today we're kicking off something that I want to start trying. Um, I want to do several playlists, I want to do like bread making, cheese making, all that. I want to do the world's best, I want to do the best English recipe, devised by, devised by your ideas, best French, blah blah blah. But also, uh, I'm going to call it maybe MVK Tries, uh, and today we are trying uh, Gordon Ramsay Beef Wellington. The ingredients cost me a lot of money, so if you have not watched the advert, refresh this video, turn your ad blocker off, watch the ad for me, help a guy out. I'll go 50-50, I'll go right? And on that note, I'm also bizarrely not worth 15 million dollars. I don't know where that came from. Sorry, Stuart. Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington, one of his dishes that he absolutely raves about. I was just looking, I've got a cookbook up there that was actually signed by him. Um, we won a competition on Twitter years ago. I'm not even going to try and find that tweet. But seriously, he raves about it and I absolutely love Beef Wellington. I was wondering over doing a vegan one. I found one website where the uh, Beef Wellington looked quite minimal, quite simple. I was like, is this it? But no. I then went to GordonRamsay.com, the home of the Ramsay, not the Ramsay's from Neighbours. This is a really weird start, I'm sorry. Serious. And I saw this absolutely gorgeous Beef Wellington. Uh, I want to try this. I'm sure it's going to be tasty. We need to move on. I don't know why it's so dark in here, I'm sorry. But first things first, um, what I like about this recipe and what I also agree with is using ready-made puff pastry. Uh, this is a sheet of ready-made. I think I mentioned this quite recently on another video. Leave it out at room temperature uh, rather than from the fridge for about 10, 15 minutes. Whoosh, makes it so much easier to roll. Oops. Um, the first thing I was going to mention about was the expensive beef fillet that I bought. And the first step is to wrap each piece of beef tightly in a triple layer of cling film to set its shape overnight. I'm filming this video on the day that I want to put it on the World Wide Web, so we're going to improvise. I'd also like to add, I went to the supermarket really early hoping to get some awesome beef, uh, beef fillet. It cost me £32 this thing, and he was hacking it like crazy. He sliced me off some gubbins, which we also need. We needed beef trimmings as well. He said, I can't do beef trimmings. So I was like, we'll just take the bits he trimmed off. Hopefully that's what Gordon meant. But this gets cooked and the flavour goes into the stock, I think, later on. Did that beef cost you 32 pounds? Yeah, it did cost me 32 quid. Oh. Mrs. Barry's question that. Yeah. Um, you don't spend 32 pounds on me. Can I just say something? What? I'm doing a... Can they see They you? can't hear what you're saying. Pull my trousers up. Hang on a sec. If I, I do what I did the other day. I'm going to turn around, I'm wearing the same jeans without a belt, oh my god. I put an emoji over the, the, the tuppence, alright? Honestly, you're going to need a big emoji. <laughs> oh no! Why in the supermarket like that? I'm trying to do a serious beef wellington here. Are you, you going out, yeah? I'm going out. She's going out, good. I never get this trouble with the pugs. This is why I get comments like the guy that I destroyed on Twitter about the talking too much. Just put music over it and be tasty or something. Scissors! Where's the scissors? You always put the scissors in random places. So we're going for triple threat uh, cling film. Triple wrapped, I don't know why. For protection. Yeah, I'm supposed to chill it overnight. It's outside, it's cold enough. I'm not putting it outside. The seagull will fly off with it. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry about the start of this video. Beef fillet there. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap it. Oh, wrap it tightly. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wrap it lengthways, sorry. Oh, that'll do. I ain't wrapped tightly. I'm gonna shove it in the freezer for an hour. If I do that to it, it's better. Kind of makes it tight. I don't think it's gonna look the best. All right, so the basis of a beef wellington is three steps normally. There's like your pastry, uh, there's like a middle layer, which I think was called a duxelle. I do remember that. Yeah, or like a paste, okay? Uh, mushrooms in this instance. That's why I didn't want to do that other one because it was just mustard, I think. It seemed quite easy. And then of course your beef fillet. So the first step normally is to sear your beef fillet, but mine is now in the freezer just to tighten it, whatever we're doing there. Uh, the next step is to fry up some mushrooms. So we'll do that. I use my gadget to help me do that. What the hell have you got in your mouth, Boston? The little go square shape. It said mixed wild mushrooms, but I just got two different packs of mushrooms of the similar weight, if that's all right. Cheers, Gordon. Not that you'll watch this, and a lot of people say, Barry, you used to look like Jamie Oliver, but now you look more like Gordon Ramsay as you're aging. All right, that's cool. 
Soon I'll be Heston, trust me. And I'm gonna use that as evidence. <laughs> but I bet Gordon ain't got one of these. Heston probably has, though. You can imagine on one of his cooking shows, like, yes, yeah, so we're going to chop this mushroom and then just pulls out one of these. Yeah. That's half my mushrooms, and I'll just uh, do the rest. There's not much room for anything else in there, is there? Dad joke. Probably gonna use this in a bit for something else, actually. And on the off chance, Gordon, if you are watching, I can give you an affiliate link so you can buy one of those yourself. Amazing. Okay, I don't grow my own yet, but in my new house I will. It's time to get our time out. Now, this is why their recipe was so expensive. So apparently we just get the leaves. Ooh, smells like Narnia. Yeah, swipe the stick away like that. <whistles> Bit of a seasoning. We're gonna need that in a minute. Apparently we just need 12 peppercorns. My favorite salt, smoke it. Found a twig. Don't want that in there. And another one. And another one. And another one. <laughs> it's fine. It gives it more of an earthy vibe, right? Why have I got the earth song in my head? If I had the time, I would now get a white shirt on and go, ah, ah, like Michael Jackson earth song. Sorry. Olive oil. We're just gonna fry it up. All right, so they're just starting to warm up in there. Uh, finally chop the mushrooms and fry them in a hot pan with a little oil, thyme, leaves, and some seasoning. Done that. When the mushrooms begin to release their juices, kind of sweat, I guess, uh, continue to cook over high heat for about 10 minutes until all the excess moisture has evaporated. So that's when you're left with the duxel, the mushroom paste thing. I gotta say already, this is smelling amazing. Random fact, I once ate a whole bowl of mushrooms at an all-you-can-eat breakfast in a hotel when I was like 10. I was obsessed with them. I think I was mushroom deprived as a youngster. Oh, you can start to see those juices, but I'm gonna really like shrivel these up. All right, classic Barry. I'm not about to cook my phone, but I've noticed that I should have finally chopped the mushrooms. Uh, yes, we'll put it in the food processor. No one will know. Do you think I could get away with um, doing a potato masher instead? This is like awesome. So all I'm doing is just simmering this down now. It smells really woody. Mushrooms are looking good. I'm gonna put them in here to whiz them up. Yeah, baby. So whilst Boston has a drink, I am ready to get my chilled beef out of the freezer. <clears throat> What's gonna happen is we're gonna get some olive oil in that pan and sear the beef. So literally just brown every side of it. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, that's probably not really done anything. All right. It got wedged in with the Ben and Jerry's, didn't it? Oh my God, I left the flame on, nearly burnt my hand. We now leave it to rest. Cool. Next, we need a sheet of cling film, my favorite thing. Uh, put it on a work surface and place slices of parma ham in the middle of it, overlapping them slightly to create a square, spreading half of the paste evenly over the ham. Parma ham costs a small fortune also. This must be a food hack with cling film where you put it in the fridge, makes it easier to unwrap. I, uh, I'll let you know about that. Okay, I will try it, but I'm a bit busy today. Oh, this is the thing about parma ham. I don't know if you, when you get it, you see how it's all individually layered. It's got like separate sheets. That's probably what you're paying for. <laughs> I'm not sure if you heard that, but the dog just popped off. Did a proper trump. <laughs> He's right down there. All right? Need a toilet? Kind of proud of him. He's never done ones like that. This ain't going good. It's just these like weird bits of plastic on it. All right, I think that will do. I'm gonna place the beef wellington that way and we'll roll it up like a carpet. Um, I totally was gonna wear wellington boots for this video, but I don't have any. One minute. Parcel. It's not the neatest. It smells like alcohol. Wow. Uh, spread in half of this paste onto the ham. It's actually quite a weird sensation. We stick our beef fillet on and give it a little bit of a season. Here's the season. Using the cling film, which for me never bodes well, roll and tie the cling film to get a nice, evenly thick log. I'm feeling like Indiana Jones right now. Do I leave the cling film on? I think I sort of do. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna leave it so I'm not completely encasing it in there, you know what I mean? Tuck in the ends as well. If I kind of just twist that like a Christmas cracker, <laughs> It's like one of them bacon bombs that's really popular on the internet like years ago. Chill for 30 minutes. We can do that. This is pretty intense, uh, but if you are enjoying this and you want to see me take on other types of recipes, let me know what they are down below and I'll, I'll have a look. I'll have a think. Next up is pastry, uh, which is going to... Hello. I'm trying to do this beef wellington. <laughs> do you know what? Um, the sofa in the other room, the green one. Yeah. The two-seater. Yeah. They've got another, another two-seater. 
and a one-seater and a little... I'm trying to do my, 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 my job. Ha hang on, internet. Okay, uh, so the egg yolks are going to get beaten with water and salt for the pastry. We're going to do an egg wash, but it's a fancy one with salt and water. I don't know why. Maybe the water with the egg makes it a little bit more manoeuvrable and the salt's just for... Two egg yolks. You don't have to do that, but it could give your egg wash a better finish. Make some meringues with that. Pinch of salt, water, and then uh, beat it. <laughs> and that's our posh egg wash. What feels like our 500th chopping board of this video so far. The room temperature pastry, which is in a, a non-slip baking parchment thing, I'm gonna leave it on that, otherwise flour the board. And that is unraveling like a charm. Done. Sorry, Gordon. Might be a little bit too big, but I don't mind. We'll slice it if needed. Done. And now we're gonna get our chilled beef out of the fridge, which just hasn't had a massive amount of time, but it'll do. Taking the wrapper off it, sitting it just to give it a bit of a lip there. I'm not going for anything too crazy on there. I'm just gonna <laughs> seal it up, but I've trimmed the excess. And the same that side, it's <laughs> a bit lopsided. So I didn't shape it too good, but that'll do. It feels secure. What happened with the rest of the mushroom stuff then? The, the one that I saw a picture of had like crazy score marks on it. I was like, I don't know if I need to do that now. I was hoping we need to do that. Cover this with cling film and put it in the fridge. Okay. Gonna have to put it on a smaller chopping board. I needed to use all of the mushroom stuff ideally because you're supposed to use two fillets, but I'm just using one log one. So I've got some of this left over, which I think on toast would be amazing. All right. All right, so our welly, which is what all the cool kids will call Beef Wellington after this video, I'm sure. Yo, did you see Barry make that welly, yo? It's pretty much done. All we've got to do is egg wash it and score it if we want. Um, the other ingredients left are for some sort of weird stocky sauce thing, which I've now just read ahead. We don't actually need to do that. I bought shallots and stuff that I don't really want in my, I, I, I will use it. Um, but I have no reason to buy, I bought wine. I could drink that wine. I don't like wine, but I could drink, I'm gonna make the sauce. But I'm not gonna simmer it for like an hour like it says on there and get scum off it and stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll skirt around it. In case you haven't caught the gist of that already. For reference though, Homer and I both think this is gonna taste amazing. Just cosmetically, not so good. Just boiling the kettle for some beef stock. And uh, by the way, we're not waking a, a beef Wellington, are we? Let's see how well you know me. Beef Barrington. <clears throat> I need a real job. Oh God, that was horrible. <laughs> you normally use the uh, cubes. 750 mils of beef stock. Let's just stir that around and take stock of the current situation. Don't worry, in terms of food puns for this video, that's your lot. Getting that pan back on, putting in my beef trimmings that aren't actually beef trimmings, but actually excess cuts of the really nice expensive beef fillets, a lot better than that in the pan. I'm now gonna wash my hands, which I have been doing through this video, I just haven't shown you. Hygiene and safety first, always. So that's just gonna brown. There it is. One bay leaf. Some more thyme. Bottle of red wine, and I don't like red wine as I say, but the way this is going, I feel like I need to drink it all. Flash of red wine vinegar, which I bought, uh, even though we've got two bottles in the cupboard already. <laughs> 12 peppercorns. Two. <laughs> Hey, oh, come on, all this. Ta -da. I've had this for years. I think I've had this since my virgin kitchen began. I was gutted that I never got a salt one so I could have one alongside it. Try not to cry, these shallots are so strong. Stop judging me, Boston. It's much easier doing Nutella recipes. All right, that step was really easy. So we've got all of our sauce prep that we don't really need ready. Well, that is a nice bit of meat in there. Peppercorns. And that's shallot. Sorry, I like that pun so much I had to get it in twice. So fry this up. We also chuck in the bay and the thyme. I ain't taking them off the twigs this time. This time. Hey. Says to fry the shallots until they're just brown, so that'll do. Red wine vinegar. A little bit of that, apparently. 
So we just simmer this off, we just reduce it down. I probably prefer the taste of red wine vinegar over red wine. Zingy, <sighs> but okay. Oh yeah, I could do a movie trailer voice now. This is the bit I don't get. The vinegar's almost gone, and now we pour in the whole bottle of wine. Like literally the whole bottle it's in. Are we sure about this? It said 750 mil on the ingredients, so. But I ain't joking, look, one 750 mil bottle of wine. Blimey, that looks like a murder scene. Simmering away, but we can actually crack on with the Wellingtons. So we're gonna take them out. I've preheated my oven, got a tray ready. We're gonna score it. So another egg wash, apparently. Do, 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 do. And now we score it, and this one's got some, yeah, proper funky designs. Is that straight down the middle? Whoa. Oh, lines like that, I think. One, two, three. Yeah, I can do that. And then I think it's two score lines like that. And your two middle ones go the opposite way, like that. And then the other ones go that way. See, a, a bit like that. Then I'll just do the opposite this way. I'm pretty chuffed with that. So just waiting for my oven to preheat. Uh, and the, the wine is actually simmering quite a lot. So good. Actually, should we just shove the stock in now? Yeah. Maybe we should have got a bigger pan. So that's brought the temperature down a bit, but we'll simmer it again and then reduce it and get rid of scum. Can you hear my oven? It's preheated. So we're gonna stick the Wellington in. It only takes about 15 to 20 minutes until golden brown. I'm doing a fan oven too, so it should be quick. Um, and then we leave it to rest. Yes. And if you caught that last clip, yes, I am wearing Christmas socks today. So this is the scum Gordon's on about. Ah. I'm about to get out of the oven and I am over the moon with how it looks externally. See how much that's reduced down? The dogs would absolutely love this bit of meat right now. But with the leftovers, I guess you could kind of like make it into some sort of epic sandwich filling. <laughs> is that right? Do you think that's right? Mrs. Barry's come back after buying like three sofas. What's it meant to be? <laughs> You're totally being the Tom and Jerry role like you used to no, right when we started this. Hello. What's it supposed to be? <laughs> the Disney spoon. <laughs> Birthday? They want to burn my tongue. <clears throat> you just squinted. Is it alright? Oh my gosh, that's really strong. Strong. Oh, ooh. Oh, that's, that's, that's like you've beefy. Only got a bit. You only need a little bit. That's nice though. Oh, that is deep. It is really that's like an aftershave, isn't it? <laughs> I like that though. Oh, that's I sorted. Like it. This is like a Valentine's thing, isn't it? My beef Barrington. Is that what you've called it? Yes. Hiya! Hiya! <gasps> look! That looks amazing! How do you do that? It looks like a little... It's like a little slug with a face. Look at the colour we've got on it. How do you get these marks on the top? I just copied the drawing. <laughs> or the photo. We've got a little bit of seepage, but the bottom's all dry and stuff. I'm happy with that. We've got to leave it to rest for 10 minutes. All right, I've got my sauce in a little ramekin. It's, it's, I think it's the juices coming out where it's rested still, but I just want to slice into this. I'm excited. Oh, oh, I am over the moon with that. Oh, I've got to taste it. Knife and fork ready. Uh, nice big old wedge there. And the sauce, oh, just going to drizzle that on it. Oh. Oh, let's go all out, why not? Yeah! Oh, I've got a nice big old slice there with the pastry, the sauce, the mushroom paste, and of course that beef. Oh, let's try it. Perks of the job right here. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on social media at My Virgin Kitchen for behind the scenes bits and bobs. Mm. Oh my word. Mm. There is so much flavour in that and it's kind of made all the hassle worthwhile. Um, I wasn't that prepared, but I've managed to make it Phenomenal, so uh, try it out, give it a go. I don't think I'm gonna tweet Gordon Ramsay uh, about this because uh, I don't know, it's his recipe and it's pretty cool. Uh, thanks for watching, I'm gonna edit you right now. Bye.